What's up guys, this is Bryce Van Hoosen and on today's episode of My Guitar Mods, we're gonna talk about a new, to me, tremolo stabilizer called the Tremory. All right, so I first heard of this from watching a similar video to the one that you're about to watch from Ola England. Actually, he went over it. He put a tremory on one of his solar guitars and I saw it and thought, hey, that's cool. Uh, let's give it a shot. So they're a little bit expensive, but uh, I went ahead and, you know, made the purchase to get one. And it got here really quick from Germany, which is where it's made, which should also be kind of a testament to the kind of engineering and sort of product that you're gonna get. But I noticed that, you know, his video sort of left a little bit of uh, information to be desired, at least in my mind, because he didn't really go over how it worked super well. I got the idea, I got the concept, I got all that kind of stuff, but uh, as far as how it was actually executed, that I didn't know until I got one for myself. So this is a tremolo stabilizer and it does exactly what that sounds like, which is it stabilizes your tremolo so that you're at a zero point at all times, unless you're actually using the tremolo. Uh, in the past, I've used a number of these things, including, you know, kind of my, uh, up until now, my favorite one, which was the, uh, the ESP arming adjuster, which is also called the Tremendous Stabilizer, I think, if you buy it from Floyd Rose directly, which is similar to the Rockinger Black Box or the old Ibanez Backstop that Steve Vai used to use back in the day, which is basically just, you know, it's an additional spring-loaded thing that kind of sits on, you know, plugs sort of into your block and sort of keeps it up at a zero point with various tension. I've also used basically the standard sort of Allen wrench screw thing that doesn't allow your tremolo to go up at all. You can only go down. That's a pretty popular one, as well as one that I didn't really like, which was the Tremel No, which is not necessarily a stabilizer. It basically just blocks it either as sort of a hardtail version or a downward only version. But I found that that one in sort of like a set it and forget it kind of thing, it doesn't really work, especially because those little turny things, they fall out. It's kind of a mess, so no thank you, trouble not. Good idea, bad execution. So this one I was really interested in because it's not like the others. It's not really sort of a spring thing that kind of just bolts into the back of your guitar. So basically how this is made is we essentially have this long sort of shaft here that's made out of the finest of German steel. Inside there's actually a little thumb screw where you can unscrew this and there is a spring in there. And they give you the option to change between a sort of a regular tension and a heavy tension spring. For some reason with my setup, the heavy tension spring was uh, a little bit more conducive to going between drop C and D standard. So basically this part here is wrapped in kind of this really tightly wound, uh, I don't know exactly what this is, maybe like brass or something. It's some kind of metal. And basically that plugs into your block here. The other side, this is where the lock is. And on some videos, I'm sure you've seen it where they've had the lock with the thumb screw. They include that, but I like the Allen wrench key. It's a little bit more low profile. This also has the same kind of material here and it's wrapped around your spring clock. In this main shaft here, this little part, which is basically kind of where all of the stabilizing actually occurs, this thing uh, gets bolted down at the zero point on this end here. When you go down in pitch, it basically kind of bounces on the sort of spring resistance of the parts that are wrapped on the outside. And when you go up, the spring that is inside this main shaft here basically pushes back and puts it back into a zero spot. So that's basically the most important functionality of how this works. So the reason that I use a lot of tremolo stabilizers is because of the fact that in my band, Silver Talon, we have songs that are basically in standard tuning, D standard to full step down, and other songs that are also in drop tuning, so drop C. And if, you know, I've done the thing where I've carried around two guitars, one guitar for standard tuning songs, the other guitar for drop C tuning songs, that's all fine and dandy, but if you're playing crappy little dive bars like we do, sometimes there's not a whole lot of space to store a bunch of different guitars. If you're bringing, you know, if you're gonna absolutely use two guitars in the set, you have to have a third one that's a backup that can go between the two of them. So then you have three guitars that you're putting on stage that you're 
potentially going to have to kind of go through to, you know, make sure that the show goes on in case you break a string. Got to switch off between the guitars in the middle of the set. If you get like a 20 or 30 minute set, that can be kind of a pain because there's time that you would be using to play that you now have to just change guitars in. And I also, you know, really kind of want to have my cake and eat it too, where I want to do the dive bombs as well as the dime bag kind of squealy bits. So in practice, does the tremory work? So it says that basically you're supposed to be able to bend. The rest of the strings aren't going to go out of tune. You can do minor drop tunings, minor. Full on tunings, you would probably have to readjust everything. So, you know, go, but going between D and drop C, that should be no problem. You should also be able to do double stops. There you go. Kind of sounds like, you know, the best of both worlds where you're sort of kept keeping everything at a zero point until you're actually using the tremolo. And you can, you know, you have the full range of motion to keep down. So, that's proof of concept right there. For the rest, I do notice that Of course, that's way better than a normal tremolo where when you're bending and doing that open, it's going to be going wow, 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 wow. Uh, this one, there's a whole lot less of that. You do your double stops. if you can see that but my tremolo is uh it's not it's not moving up at all so that's cool Sweet, it works. I do notice that if I'm doing kind of like really wide bends or wide vibratos or kind of like over bending a little bit, I will be able to kind of pull it out of tune just a little bit, but. So let's check and see if we could do kind of like a drop C thing. Cool, so now I'm down to C. No other adjustments made on any of the other strings. You can play all of your badass drop tuning 80s riffs. And the drum will still work. I do notice, and this is kind of the same with any other sort of guitar, even if it's a hard tail, if you adjust the tuning on one string, the other one's kind of out of tune. Uh, and most tremolo stabilizers are going to do this because literally kind of just leaving uh, the stabilization in the hands of a little spring. So we are just a little bit out on the other strings I notice here, especially on the G string, as is the case. But, I mean, you could totally make that work during a show, no problem. Um.
final verdict on this one, I do think that it works very well. And as you can see, it's really just kind of like a set it and forget it sort of thing. It's not gonna come undone. You're not gonna really need to adjust anything if you're using the same strings whatever you're basically all good to go and it works it's getting a little bit warmer here in portland which that usually means that i have to kind of go through and reset up a lot of guitars and stuff like that this one i kind of just tune it up in the morning you know check the truss rod good to go no adjustments need to be made here some other things like with a normal tremolo stabilizers one downside is that basically it makes the bar a little bit stiffer that's kind of the point so it's sort of the best of both worlds, you know. Another thing is it gets rid of that sort of flutter kind of thing. So if you want to do any of the Andy LaRock kind of boing-yoing stuff, you're not going to be able to do it. And that's true with any sort of tremolo stabilizer. It's not the fault of the tremory at all. The only thing that's really kind of confusing is that in the instructions, it comes with a sheet that basically tells you how to measure where you can put the tremory because they come in three different sizes, 71 millimeters, 76, and I think 81. So three different sizes, five millimeters apart, but they don't really show you how to measure that. If they had included this picture on the product page somewhere, would have made life a little bit easier. That being said, I thought, well, I'm not sure how to measure this exactly. So I measured basically from, you know, the spring cloth to the actual block. And I thought, oh, okay, I have plenty of room for an 81 millimeter tremory. Uh, that is not the case. In fact, I think if you don't know which size you need, you should err on the side of caution and get the smallest one possible because it doesn't really matter. You need to at least have 71 millimeters between the block and, you know, the very outside edge of the cloth. But if you have more than that, you could still use the 71 millimeter tremory unit because it basically just locks here. To make enough room, I actually had to get some super light tension springs from a company called FU Tone here in the States. I'm sure most of you have heard of them. And so that allowed me to kind of screw my claw in a little bit more. I use these Ernie Ball strings in D standard. So it's a 10 through 48 pack, but because I'm going between D standard and drop C, I usually switch the 48 string to a 54 gauge string, not incredibly heavy strings. It probably feels something like nine through 46 with maybe a 52 on the E if you were an E standard. So if you're like me and you don't like super heavy strings because why make it harder on ourselves? You might want to get some of these light tension springs, I guess, from FU Tone because the normal ones were not working for me. The red ones were not working. And if you do end up getting one that is longer or, you know, this kind of shaft piston thing is uh, too long, I mean, you can actually cut it. I think I actually cut mine down because I got the 81 millimeter one. I cut it down to like 65 or something and it's, it's fine. As long as you have enough room where you're locked in where this Allen wrench piece is, it's okay. So that part's kind of confusing. I think they could maybe make that a little bit more clear on the site. Maybe they do. And you know, the fact that my Deutsch is not that awesome might be working against me, but you never know. Anyway, let me know your thoughts. Have you checked out the Tremory? Uh, do you love it? Do you hate it? Let me know in the comments and I will see you soon.